I'm going to begin in Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7, verse 1, it says, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he lives. Uh, we are talking about healing, but before we get to that, we're going to just lay a foundation here. And so Paul makes the assessment that uh, the law only has authority over someone as long as he lives. And, and we would understand that uh, when, a, when a person is convicted of a crime, uh, that penalty does not go on after death. So a person can receive multiple life sentences, but they're only going to serve one. Uh, they could receive years that are longer than what their lifespan is. And when they die, uh, they get buried, and they don't, they don't even get buried in their, in their prison clothes. Uh, that penalty is done. And so the law only has dominion over us as long as we're alive. Now, verse 4, Paul says, Wherefore, my brethren, you also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ that you should be married to another, even to him who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. And so the connection that we're having here is that uh, as Christians, we have, we have died with Christ. And so once we died with Christ, the law does not have an authority over us. And what I want you to see with that when we talk about the law in this case, uh, we're not talking about a Mosaic law, but we're talking about penalties of the law. We're, and we're also talking about what the law created in us. So, for example, Paul talked about uh, that if there wasn't a law, there wouldn't be sin because it's the law that brings the awareness of sin to us. So the example he used was he wouldn't have known what coveting was had the law not said, thou shalt not covet. And so we, we do understand from a, from a human perspective uh, the struggles that we have uh, the the reason for that struggle is that there's something that says we shouldn't have it, we shouldn't do it. Now, when we've died with Christ, uh, we're we're dead to that, meaning that we have a freedom now through Christ. We're we're not, we no longer have to live to the satisfaction of those desires. We're no longer. Uh, compelled by, we're no longer controlled by those thoughts, those desires, those things that are contrary to God. Uh, but because we've died with Christ, the authority that those things have had over us is also dead. Uh, Romans 6, 8 says that if we be dead with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. So again, this is a verse that just indicates the death, the death that we have, <clears throat> excuse me, the death that we have with Christ. Going back into Romans chapter 7, verse 6, it says, We are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit, not in the oldness of the letter. And so again, uh, it's the freedom that we have. It's a freedom that we have because we've died with Christ. And uh, as, a, as a side note here, that it's very important that we recognize this truth that we have died with Christ because... If we're going about trying to get freedom and victory over any of those fleshly, normal, natural, man-human desires, if we're going about the freedom through any other means than Jesus, it's futile. Meaning you can have a great amount of self-discipline, but that's not freedom. Uh, you can have self-control, you can break a habit, but that's not freedom. When we, when we experience this death with Christ, we experience being crucified with him, we get a freedom from it. Uh, verse 13 in Romans chapter 7, the Bible, Paul says, Was then that which is good made death unto me, God forbid, but sin that it might appear sin, working death in me by that which is good, that sin by the commandment might become exceeding sinful. Now, the, the connection that I want to make here is to the two words, sin and death. Those, those desires, those contrary desires that are stirred up in us because of what we recognize godly versus ungodly, it produces death in us. Sin produces death. And that's the connection that we have between sin, sickness, and death. In a previous lesson, we talked about sickness being the result of sin. 
not every sickness is the result of personal sin. You know, if somebody's sick, it doesn't mean that they've sinned or that they've done wrong, but it does mean that we live in a fallen world. And because of that fall, there is sickness in this world. Because of death, there is sickness in this world. Sin and death are, wor are working together, working hand in hand. Uh, and read, read Romans chapter 7 for more information and more details on how Paul lays this out with sin and death and, and how, the, how the two work together. Our focus is on healing. Uh, our study is on healing. What we've been studying for the last several weeks is on healing. And so the connection that, that I want to make is that sin and sickness, again, they're hand in hand. Uh, sin and death is hand in hand. And that is the, that's the, the product that is working in this world. Now the Bible says that we live in a world that uh, we live in, in a world that has a pattern. Uh, the prince of the power of the air is over that pattern, and that pattern is set up to bring us away from God, uh, to turn our attention away from Him and to turn our attention to other things or to turn our attention into ourselves. And so with that, though, what we're, lo what we're looking at with this pattern of sin, sickness, and death is we're, we're understanding it, then the, the term here is law. Another term that I'm going to use here is rule. There's an order that's established. We have an order of treating sickness. Uh, you, if you studied medicine or you know any doctors, nurses, we've all been, we probably all of us have been treated for something. Uh, that there's a pattern of treatment that doctors have. If you go and you're diagnosed, whatever you're diagnosed with, there's a pattern of treatment. It's medications that have already been determined to be effective therapies, surgeries, whatever it might be, there's a pattern of treatment. Well, that, that's a rule, that's a law. This is how we're going to treat that. There's an expectation of that illness. Again, that's a rule or that's a law. If you, when you're diagnosed with a disease, there's an expectation of how that disease might progress. That's a rule, that's a law. And apart from that, that is, that's the law of all of nature. That's the rule of all humanity. And as I shared with our church, to me, it's, it, is a, it is a great evidence of why I believe that there is a creator. Because there are rules and laws, because this is not randomness. There is an expectation of how things are going to be done, how disease and sickness is going to progress. Uh, again, that's a rule and law. And now what I want to do is I want to jump into Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verse 2, it says, The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And so the, what I, what the first thing I want you to see is the, the law of sin and death as it relates to sickness. So the law of sin and death as it relates to sickness is that uh, our bodies are subject to sickness, our bodies are subject to disease. The law of sin and death as it relates to sickness is how they progress, how, how it rains, and, and even how you treat it, how our bodies respond to it. But there is a promise that we have as born-again believers, and that is that we're under a new law. See. The principle is this, we've died, we've died to that law. We've died to that law in Christ. And because we've died to that law in Christ, that law no longer has its ultimate authority in us. But what the Bible teaches us here in Romans chapter 8 is that we have a new law that rules over us. And it's not a law of sickness and death, but it is a law of spirit of life. That's the law that rules over us as believers, is the law of spirit of life. In the early 1900s, in 1910, there's a gentleman, his name is John Lake, John G. Lake. I encourage you to do some reading on him. He had a phenomenal healing ministry. Uh, later, he would settle in the upper northwest, uh, Washington State. The area that he lived in uh, had the lowest percentage of sickness in the whole in the whole state 
He had a tremendous healing. God used him in a tremendous healing ministry. But in, in 1910, he was in Africa. There was a plague in Africa. And uh, pe people were dying. The government, it was so bad, the government was paying up to $1,000 for any nurse who would treat patients. Now keep in mind, this is 1910, and the government's paying $1,000 in Africa for people to come in and treat patients. Uh, John G. Lake and his assistants, they went free of charge to offer help. And they would go in and they would carry out, they would handle the dead bodies. They would carry out the dead bodies uh, they were, they came in contact with people who had the disease, people who died from the disease, but they experienced no symptoms. They experienced no symptoms of this sickness. And eventually the government came and asked him what, what were they doing? And his response was, brother, it is the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. And so see, he understood a scriptural truth. And that scriptural truth is because he died to died in Christ, the law of sin and death no longer had an authority over his body. But the law of the life of the Spirit had control over his body. F. F. Barnesworth, uh, he said the law of the Spirit of life, which heals our souls and bodies, is much stronger than the law of sin and death. These aren't just words that Paul's writing here in Romans. He's actually uh, laying out for us diametrically opposed laws. And the diametrically opposed laws are the life of the Spirit, the, the life of the law of the Spirit of life, and the law of sin and death. These two things oppose each other. When we did not know Jesus as our Savior, there was only one law that was over us, and that was the law of sin and death. It was chaos, it was sickness, it was death. But when we died to Christ, that law no longer has an authority over us, but the law of the Spirit of life now has an authority that's over us. Now, your que some might question, they say, well, then why do I still get sick? Well, one reason that we still get sick is that we live in we the in the realm that we live in we live in a realm of sickness and death and so uh, law in itself does not stop somebody or something from acting but law does empower us and so for example in in the natural we have laws that protect us we have laws that protect our property if you came home from work one day and somebody was sitting on your living room couch you would have the law that protected you against that person. That person can't take from you. That person should not be able to take from you. And in fact, you would have the ability to defend your home. The law didn't stop that person from coming in, but the law empowered you to remove that person. And that's how I see in Romans chapter, chapter 8 that working is that the law of the spirit of life, it might not prevent sickness from coming into my body but it does in Jesus name give me the power and the authority to speak sickness out of my body it does in Jesus name give me a power and authority to declare my health my life in Jesus name because that's the law that I'm under now Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says there's no condemnation for those of us who are in Christ Jesus. And you go back and you read Romans chapter 7 because it is a continuing thought. You go back and you see the, the areas of failure and we all understand those areas of failure. Well, there's no condemnation for, the, for those of us who are in Christ. But we can expand that truth out even a little bit further and we can say that. So instead of, instead of just looking at condemnation, meaning a, a, a charge that's against us, we can, also, we can also make this application and we can say, because I've died in Christ, not only do I not have charges against me, but but there's there's nothing that says that I have to go through that. I don't have to be sick. I don't I don't have to have this sickness. It's not destined for me. There's a and there's a broader application with this. And I do understand when I'm teaching this. This might sound rather fanatical, but 
but this is just right in line with what the Bible says. We have to be able to we we have to grow into this with our faith to be able to bring our faith to this level. I'll go back to a story with John G. Lake. I've read several books on his lifestyle and on his life. And and uh, and it's amazing for a man that was used to the degree that he was to still have the humility that he had in the sense to recognize that his faith still had to grow. And there's a story once, there was one story that he had, a, there was a person that was praying for a young boy, praying for this young boy's recovery. And when John Lake looked at the person, looked at the boy, he could tell the boy's neck was broken. But the person that was praying for him was not aware of that and was praying so intently. And the, the statement was he didn't have the faith to pray for him and so he left. And God healed that young boy. And, and so when we look at this verse of there's no condemnation for those of us that are in Christ, we, we, we have to recognize that our faith is going to have to grow to this level. It's not something that we can just look at this and say, okay, there it is. We're, we're going to, we will grow into this level. So take what the, what the Bible says here. What the Bible says here is this, is that there is a new law that's active in your life. The old law was sin and death. The old law was sickness. The old law didn't give us any hope. And that old law not giving us any hope is no longer the law that rules over us. And so if a person goes to the doctor and the doctor gives a diagnosis of a disease or a sickness, that doctor is diagnosing and operating under the rules of that old law. But praise God, we got a new law that's over us. And this new law that's over us says that our bodies don't have to go through that same process. An example that I shared on the Wednesday night was that if, if we were traveling and we were in a foreign country, I believe I said in Dubai, and so an Arab country, a Muslim country, and there you, there you are, and for whatever reason, you have a conflict with their law. And you're, you're in trouble with their law. And they're going to bring down the consequences of their law on you. And as, that, as they pursue you or they fi you find out they're going to come after you, you take off and you head to the United States Embassy. When you get to that embassy and you cross the gate of that embassy, even though as far as your eye can see, you see you're seeing Dubai, when you're standing on that embassy, you're as good as on U.S. soil. You are on U.S. soil. And even everyone in Dubai knows you're on U.S. soil because you've crossed into that embassy. When you've died, into, when you've died with Christ, there is a new law that rules over you, the law of the spirit of life. That new law rules over you. And because of that, you've, you've crossed that gate. You've crossed that gate, and you are now on a new territory. And so in Jesus' name, we claim this promise. We claim this promise of healing. The old law says I don't have a chance. The old law says that genetically I'm predisposed to certain conditions. Uh, I shared the example of my mom. My mom was diagnosed with macular degeneration over 30 years ago. And so when the doctors diagnosed her, they told her that it would probably one day take her eyesight. They warned her that my sister and I should get eye exams every year to make sure that we don't have that. And I'm actually a little bit older now than what my mom was when she was diagnosed. But now here she is 30 years later with this eye condition that the doctor said would rob her of her eyesight. And she has had vision issues. She does have problems with her eyes. However, she still drives herself. She still reads books. She's, she still is able to function uh, not near what the doctors would have anticipated 30 plus years ago. Now, why is that? It's not because of the medical treatment that she's received, but it's because of the law of the life of the spirit that is in her. She's operating under a different set of rules. What's operating in her body is under a different set of rules than what most doc what than what doctors are used to dealing with because she's a child of God. And that's the promise that we have as believers is there's a new law that rules over us. 
Uh, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, it says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. And it says this, Old things are passed away, and it goes on to say, All things are become new. Now, I know that this, it might sound kind of extreme to, cha to, to claim this, but I claim all things being all things. And when it comes to sickness, I bring my, I bring my health right here to this promise. I bring what I'm ge genetically predisposed to right, un right to this promise. Uh, my wife is genetically predisposed to diabetes. Her, parent, her dad was a diabetic. Her, grandparent, her grandpa was a diabetic. Her brother and sister are both diabetics. My family uh, predisposed to uh, high blood pressure, other health conditions. Okay, that, that's genetically the, what I'm dealing with. And I know the rules or the laws of all of those conditions. But when I pray in Jesus' name, I'm not claiming that rule and law because I've died to Christ. And because I've died with Christ, I'm a new creature. And all things are made new. And since all things are made new, there's a new set of rules that are operating in me that it's, you're not going to find that in a medical book. You're not going to find that in a medical journal. And it's going to be unique to me. It's going to be unique to Jeff Edmondson, what God's doing in my life and in my body. And so I'm claiming that and I'm believing that. And so when I pray, the doctor has told me that I have high blood pressure. And so, and I do take medicine for my high blood pressure. So I'm not telling you don't take your meds or go to the doctors or anything like that. But what I'm saying is this, but I also, when I pray, I put my body before Jesus and I know that my body Though my body might have this condition, the prognosis of that condition is not what everybody else thinks because there's a new law that's over me. Uh, genetically speaking, you might have genetic markers that, that mark you for a certain health condition. Instead of being afraid for it, I, afraid about it, I want to encourage you, claim this promise. There's a new law. There's a new law. The law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, it has set me free. I want to encourage you today that that if you know Jesus as your personal Savior, I want to encourage you today, this is a promise that you can take when you pray. This is a promise that you can claim when you pray. This promise that there's a new law that's over you. Some of us as believers, we get so caught up in the prognosis from the doctor. And I, and I do understand, and I'm not faulting anybody because I'm the same way. But you know, the Bible says that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Let me share a lesson with you that I learned uh, not, not too long ago. When you hear something from somebody in a position of authority, such as a doctor, that, cre that creates a, a chain, a series in you that is going to affect your belief system. So when you're sit down and you talk to a doctor and the doctor gives you a prognosis, you have no reason to not believe him. And when you hear that, you're going to believe him, and that is a, a level of faith. That's not biblical faith. It's not God faith, but it is your belief system. The doctor said this is what's going to happen. The doctor said this is what most likely is going to happen. But, when, but, I, but let, me, let me tie that into what I'm teaching today, and that's this. What the doctor's telling you is out of the books that he's read and the experience that he's read that is governed by this law of the spirit, the, I'm sorry, this law of sin and death. So what we have to do as believers then is we have to be able to hear what that doctor says, but then at the same time be able to see what the Bible says. And what the Bible says is there's a different law. There's a different set of order there's a different set of rules. And I, I can hear what the doctor says. And I understand that this is the way that they're predicting it. But I'm going to choose to believe what God says. And my, by faith, I'm going to hear what God says. I'm going to apply what God says. And I'm going to claim this for my life and for my body. And I want to encourage you with that today. To begin to claim the new promises that we have from the law of the spirit of life that now rules over us. 
Let's claim those promises of healing. Let's claim the promises of strength. Let's claim the promises of peace, physically, emotionally, mentally, intellectually, our healing is in Christ. And so friend, I just want to encourage you today. There's a new set of rules. Uh, the joke that we've made at the church, there's a new sheriff in town. That sheriff is Jesus in this case, and and uh, he rules over us. And so I'm, I'm thankful for that today, that he rules over us. Hey, let me ask a quick word of uh, blessing over you. Father, in Jesus' name right now, I speak your word of healing. God, anybody that's hearing this today, you're, any of your children today that's hearing this, God, I pray today your healing. I pray, God, the effect of the law of the spirit of life, God, healing in their life and in their bodies. And I pray, God, for those today that would hear this, that, that do not know you as Lord and Savior. I pray today, God, first for their salvation, for that hope in Jesus Christ. And God, that, that, that they not walk this alone, but God, that they can walk with you in harmony with, other, with others who already know you as Lord and Savior. God, I just give you the praise today in Jesus' name. Amen.